Hello everybody, Peter of England. Today's video um, is a special topic. It's very important um, to everybody on the planet with what's happening and taking place in the world generally. Um, it's concerning a world religion, um, a following uh, of a particular cult that you are probably unaware of, though you will have heard of it. And the, the, the main thrust of the, the video is to explain to you who is actually controlling the world, who's actually controlling the military, the industries, um, and every part of life that embraces you daily. Um, by necessity, the nature of the video is reasonably intricate, but what I'm trying to do now is to make it as simple as possible for you so that you can understand certain things that are are simply passing you by on your general day-to-day -day lifestyle, but really need to be uh, uh, drilled down on so that you can get a, a better grip or a better understanding of how to change things. One of the ways for you to change things is to go to area52.life, um, have a look under the services section and go to declaration or divorce under services. What you will actually see there then is a document called Declaration of Divorce, uh, which is what it says, um, a way for you to communicate to the powers that be, whoever they are, whether it's the judiciary, whether it's law firms, whether it's local councils, whether it's the IRS or whether it's HMRC or other taxation authorities, wherever you may live, that you are not the individual that they are assuming that you are. They're assuming that you are a pledged um, trustee shackle for the payment of a global debt within a system. You're communicating to them that that is not so. You can also back that up by using another document uh, that you can find there, and this is the uh, Clausula Rebus Sixtantibus document, um, which is uh, a quite a considerable document that's available to explain to you the precise nature of what's called legal name fraud. Um, and the use of the birth certificate as a device of entrapment and that it is actually traded on international markets um, for other people's benefit financially, but not for yours. That having been said, what we're going to look at now is uh, a couple of examples of just how wide, how far this net or mesh of Satan um, actually uh, is thrown over the entirety of the planet. And so we're going to start off with um, highlighting something this is something we touched on I think in the previous one um, and it's something that is a, a fundamental aspect now of all global Freemasonry whether it's the international blue lodges whether it's the P2 of Italy whether it's the Scottish Rite in Scotland or the, the uh, Unified Grand Lodge in, um, in, in England. Global Freemasonry runs under a set of premises that were adopted um, around about the turn of the century, the 20th century, between sort of 1895, 1910, 1915, and were, were thrust upon the world, really, by this guy, a black magic Issian, um, I'm using what's called ceremonial magic. Now, why that's important is that there were a lot of, of schools that were running prior to this, um, like the Order of the Golden Dawn, the, the uh, Theosophical Society of um, Blavatsky. But 
Crowley came together and reportedly due to an incident that happened in Cairo, I think around 1910, um, an entity started to communicate with his wife and he took the notes down while she was in trance and this became something called Book of the Law. Um, the Book of the Law was highly significant because it was given to him by someone who called itself the Lama. Um, the main text or the main tenet of what was given was do what thou wilt is the extent of the law. So in, in effect, do whatever you want because you are in charge of your own life and you can therefore act in a way that is almost like uh, godlike. Now, the, the main problem with that is it's a very, very defined corridor in between proceeding under a banner of love and compassion and tolerance, all the Christic principles, as opposed to going down the self-centered, self-indulgent, ego-based level, which is, um, I will do whatever I choose to do, regardless of the consequences on other people. So, it's no coincidence that that has been adapted or adopted wholesale by the Masonic lodges and incorporated into a greater part of, of their teachings. And I think I mentioned last time um, there were several uh, groupings within Alistair Crowley's um, um, teaching doctrines or, or um, should we say, institutions or fraternities. There was the Ordo Templis Orientalis, then there was a, a variation of it called S-O-T-O, -O, and then there was a T-O-T-O. -O. There was the Order of the Golden Dawn, Order of the Golden Dawn. Um, and all these were, over time, uh, congregated into a particular uh, um, regime that the, the lodges of the United Kingdom and uh, worldwide adopted. So we've got the, there's around about 10,000 lodges in the United Kingdom, around about 100 members, give or take, some active, some not. Um, and what that does is it gives us around about 1 million, 1 million individuals in the United Kingdom alone who are controlling almost every part of your daily life. So why this is important is I want to try and show you how it wraps up into politics and all the politicians that are involved in it, not only on the political side, but also on the, the, um, the administrative side in the background, which then transponds or transpires into um, the, the, um, the world of, of business and finance, banking, and then into the media and the propagandist uh, organs of, of state, including, or as a, a main corridor there, the BBC, um, CBS, CNN, all these organizations are feeding a storyline to you, which isn't in your best interest, i.e. they're not telling you the truth. So what, we've, what I'm trying to do here is put this into perspective, to show you that all these individuals, like the Prime Minister of the UK, Rishi Sunak, the guy that they are preparing now to take over from him, which is Keir Starmer. And I'll throw in another one here now. Um, he was a, a, a paedophile or child trafficker for many years, worked very closely with Prince Charles, worked very closely with Princess Diana, was knighted uh, by the Pope. I think he was given, um, no, no, he was, he was knighted by the United Kingdom royal family and he was given an honor, I think, the, 
the, the, the Legion of St. Gregory by the Pope. Um, and his name was Saville, Jimmy Saville. Now, why this is important is this guy here, Starmer, and please, uh, for all those people who are in other Commonwealth countries or in the United States, doesn't matter where, where you are, the game is played exactly the same wherever. And I'm going to give you a running example in the moment of actually how they recruit individuals into these organizations from day one. Usually they get them when they're young or younger, more impressionable, more subject to, uh, shall we say, peer pressure, and have got a desire to make a name and a way in life. Um, for the political side of it, maybe they wait a little bit longer, but let's look at this character here, who is soon to be the next prime minister following Sunak's term of office when he'll either be kicked out or they'll lose heavily in the next, uh, next election. Um, why this is important is this guy is not there by accident. He has been prepped. He's been prepared. He's a Satanist. He's a worshipper of Lucifer. Um, he's a proponent of the church of Thelema. And he is as corrupt as the predecessor that's going to be leaving. And so we have a cascade of these people going back from, he will be the next incumbent, he is the current, the one before him was Boris Johnson, who's a member of the Bullingdon Boys and probably the part of the Hellfire Club with Nathan Rothschild, um, Osborne, who was the chancellor, and Cameron, who was a previous politician. They were all at Cambridge or Oxbridge at the same time and all ascended through to positions of ministerial or prime ministerial power. Coincidentally, I think not. And why this is in interesting though for you or should be, most of the people you'll talk to say, yes, we know about this. We know about um, so-called uh, Satanism and strange rituals and cultish behavior. Uh, what they mean by that is they've heard of it. They don't really know, they've just heard. And hearing about it isn't the same as knowing. And so what I'm trying to do today is to empower you with giving you a little bit more deeper information of a practical nature so you don't have to start searching around looking for answers. Because that's the, that's the main problem um, that, that I see generally at the moment is everybody's looking around for the, for the guilty or they're looking around for the people that are causing problems and they are thinking, well, it can't be this bunch because, you know, they're doing a, as good a job as any and they're all incompetent anyway. But you're looking and deceiving yourself. You're in a state of denial, most people are, and they're feigning concern and ab abhorrence. And what I mean by that is they are allowing these individuals to walk down the street naked, like in the, in the, um, the, uh, the story of the emperor's new clothes, by pretending that everything is okay when it isn't. Uh, you don't have to search, you don't have to look, just name anyone. Uh, Gates or Fauci or Sunak or Van der Leyen or Merkel, uh, Trudeau, Macron, you were allowing all these individuals to dance you down the road as if butter wouldn't melt in their mouth and they are they're treading or flying with angel's wings. This is not the case. So you have to ask yourself what needs to be done and how do I begin to do something about it? And the first part to that would be, I would suggest that you waken up and start giving some type of pushback against this, these authoritarian figures because Without doing that, we're all going to be in desperate problems. So, what we've got here is Starmer and Saville as an example. Keir Starmer was the head of the equivalent of the DOJ, which is called the Crown Prosecution Service, in the United Kingdom between 2008 and 2013. And at that time, the biggest series 
of allegations with witnesses and police statements were broached into the public domain while Starmer was head of the Crown Prosecution Service. This guy is the leader of the Labour Socialist Party and will be the next Prime Minister. Okay? What he did is he covered the whole thing up and refused to make any prosecution against Savile on the basis that there was insufficient evidence. Every man and his dog, a blind man on a galloping horse these days, can see that everything was hidden in plain sight. So what I'm emphasizing here to you is that this group of individuals from Sunak, who was an individual who came up through Goldman Sachs, with Starmer here doing his thing with the Crown Prosecution and Savile doing all this horrific, satanic, Luciferian manipulation in the background in full, full conscious awareness of the security forces or services and Prince Charles and the royal family, including the Queen. All of this was going on and is going on still, yet being denied and hidden with occasional sacrifices being made. So. Why I'd like to emphasize this a little bit more here is that Rishi Sunak is the youngest politician and the wealthiest politician ever to become prime minister in the UK over the last 200 years. Is that an accident that he didn't really get into politics until 2015? He started off um, after he'd finished his education working for Goldman Sachs. Um, what is also, and why I'm bringing this, this up now, is that Sunak is one of the founder investors in a corporation called Moderna. Okay, now Moderna hadn't got more than probably two products in total on its shelf before the so-called pandemic broke out. Now, through a organization, a hedge fund called Felima, and don't forget, it's the phonetic pronunciation that is important, more than, yeah, with synonyms and anonyms, it's the, it's the phonetic expression that's the most important. And so this hedge fund called Philema uh, registered, I think, at 65, which is in an 11 here, uh, Curzon Street in London, this organization here, no coincidence of the name, was a hedge fund founded in part by Rishi Sunak. And Rishi Sunak has repeatedly refused to admit or answer questions as to whether he benefited financially from the vaccine program that Moderna were funded from or by with money from, from here. And if you also, could pay attention here. We've got something here at the end. RNA. We've got M O D, which is Latin or Italian for fashion or French fashion, and R N A. So to fashion, R N A. Looks like Moderna. They're very good at hiding these things in full sight. So why this is important is that Sunak came up through the World Economic Forum. He came up as a Satanist. The guy that's going to be following him in his footsteps is this character, and the whole entourage are covered in it from head to toe. And the only individual that seems not to be in this is the likes of you and me and a few other people on the street. If you're in the world of media, fashion, big business, whether it's Richard Branson, whether it's Bezos, whether it's Zuckerberg, whether it's Musk or Trump, they're all in it. 
Um, so every politician, every government minister, every judge, every senator, every congressman, every member of parliament, um, whether it's, as I say, Bezos, whether it's Elon Musk, um, people in the CIA, the FBI, the Department of Justice, MI5, MI6, in the, the Treasury Departments, they've all got their own individual lodges. So from Winston Churchill right the way through to the incumbent that's coming next, um, all of these individuals have been initiated and are blooded. Yeah? They are not allowed to progress or be part of the establishment unless there is stuff on them. And what that stuff on them is, um, is an oath that they have made to Lucifer. Um, in many instances, I talked about this last time, you've got these various hand signals that they give, the 6661, um, there's the handshake, uh, which you can see here where usually you see these politicians doing the handshake and they're pressing this thumb here right into the, the, the gap here between the thumb and the pointing finger or the index finger. Um, it's a way of communicating to each other that they are who, you know, they're, they're in, in, in a Masonic uh, lodge or affiliated. And so these, these modalities with the hand maybe sometimes concealed within the jacket, with the horns of Baphomet, I won't do the, the signals because I don't quite like doing them even if it's just for effect on camera. Um, all of these um, gestures, the, the blackened eye or the eye being covered, the finger up against the lips, we've gone through these in, that in a previous video, so I won't go over them again. Um, all these are signs that the organizations are operating these individuals as puppets and they've made an oath or taken an oath. Um, so that having been covered, what I'd like to do now is give you an example of how these people or how people generally uh, are recruited into this, this church, uh, into this religion into this anti-Christic organization because it's very, very simple for you to, to follow. There's no, no complexity here. You've got on one side love and the other you've got... This is Christic. This is not. So... The simplicity, the denial that most people are under and still carry on their day-to-day -day lives by even to the extent of protesting but still allowing the evil to continue is quite uh, overpowering. It's the people are generally maybe so shocked or so confused or feeling so helpless or hopeless that they can't or don't think that anything can be done. Well, we assure you that it can be done, so you need to go here and have a look at the, the documents I, I initially referred you to. Um, because on this side here, we have tolerance, love, patience, compassion, helpfulness, forgiveness of debt, etc. Care of the environment, care for animals, care for each other. Over here, look around you. What do these politicians have you doing? We have war after war after war. We have children being killed, massacred, tortured, uh, sacrificed. We have um, poverty. We have governments that uh, are run by oligarchies. We have the constant drone of that languid funeral march to the grave, lack of health care, um, lack of proper education, lack of water and food for communities worldwide, um, while the rich get richer and the club, which you're not in, the church here, the religion, the secret religion, um, is operating behind the scenes and you are in it or you're not in it. And, and so what I want to do now is give an example of, of how this this recruitment process goes. Um, 
There is a boxer who's recently come out and said that he's going to expose the facts of what were done to him at Bohemian Grove. I think his name Ray Garcia. There's another guy called Dougie, Dougie Corrado, uh, who made a, a, a series of videos about um, what had taken place with him in Hollywood. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to amalgamate that story and put it together in um, a, a scenario of hope that hopefully you can follow and will make sense to you. This applies across the board. If you are in politics, if you are getting into a Fortune 500 company, if you are um, in the media, if you're in the recording business, if you're in TV, films, anything to do with the big Hollywood studios or, or TV, film, pro media production, this applies to you or them. Why wouldn't it? Well, think it through. Let's say you want funding for your next film and you've got the most incredible idea imaginable. It's a very good script. You've got actors willing to act in it and everything looks good. Why on earth would the funding from the, uh, from the studio front you up 100 million when the other people who've gone through the system of taking an oath or um, swearing allegiance not to God but to Lucifer, why would you be considered um, tenable for that, um, for that loan? Why would you be considered for the part? What would happen is, uh, as an act, it would be it would be stratified. It would be a um, what would you call it? It would be just a random lottery as to who got the part and who didn't. All the people who get the parts, all the people who get the big clicks, all the people who get as YouTube creators um, furthest, generally at the top, have been approached on what I'm going to mention to you now, and that is to be welcomed into this, this organization, this, this Crowley-esque world which um, is associated with ceremonial magic, black magic, and everything on the negative side of the path. Um, so what typically would happen in, and we'll, let's just use Hollywood as a scenario. One of the reasons this is, a, is, a, is timely at the moment, you've got somebody called P. Coombs, which is actually someone called P. Diddy. I uh, don't know much about the, the, the organization, but he's a rapper. I've been involved with 50 Cent and some guy called Tupac and all these people. Um, and what's happened recently, you've just seen his mansions, two mansions have just been raided by the, the FBI, um, and there is rumor that he has been set up or he's been sacrificed by this organization that does that when your, your, um, your usefulness has expired, like they've done with um, Harvey Weinstein, like they did with Epstein like they did with Alec Baldwin, like they did with Pee Wee Herman, look like might be doing with Russell Brand, uh, people like um, Gary Glitter, Rolf Harris. Lots of these people in the, uh, in the media um, get sacrificed from time to time because it's useless as a diversion so that it looks as if there is a system of justice. They did a similar thing with Kanye West um, uh, and the, the Kardashian group. So all of these individuals are operating as blooded oath takers with an allegiance to the devil, to Lucifer, to Satan. And how they do it is as follows, as an example. So um, let's say you are in Hollywood, you are in London, you could be in New York, it doesn't matter. The agency scouting maneuver is the same. Individuals who are invariably young, could be a rock band that looks promising, or an individual within a rock band, uh, an actor, it doesn't matter. Um, they are spotted, okay? then they are scouted by an agent or a scout who basically will um, say to them 
that they are noted, that they've had a, a good comments made about them. And what they want to do is invite them to a party. It starts on, on a party circuit. This is why this guy P. Diddy um, was hosting parties all around the United States, because he was acting as a host, not as a, a, an agent or a scout. So what the agent or scout says to the individual, or if he's working with two others or a band of five, doesn't matter, um, look out for the inv invitation. It will be being sent to you soon for you to attend the next party, because we like, we like your style. The invitation comes along, very elaborate. Um, it says things like, um, we have noticed your talent, your name has been endorsed, you are going to be invited to this function, you are one night away from every dream, making reality every dream you have ever been chasing in the seventh heaven. Okay, so that's how it's, how it's generally worded. Now, with that, um, there is a set of specific instructions with the, the invitation. The invitation basically says um, the form of dress, which is formal, black tie even, um, the, the name, sorry, the name of the property, the address, the time it's going to start, and that's usually seven o'clock, and an instruction not to be late. Okay, so on the appointed evening, the individuals or individual turns up and he's greeted at this address, uh, which is exceptionally opulent. And usually if it would be, let's say, in the, um, in the United Kingdom, it would be a country estate somewhere out, uh, out of the general range of, of passers-by or located in its own lands. So... What happens there is as they arrive at the, at the door, um, their mobile phone is taken away from them. They're asked to sign what's called an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. They're given a badge with an alias name. It could be Starburst, it could be Happy Duck, it could be anything, and they're given a mask. Okay. Now, from that point on, mask goes on, NDA signed, Telephone handed over. They go into the reception area for, for the party. Now, in that reception area, there are all the celebrities that you could possibly imagine that have been um, commandeered, ordered, asked, or just like to attend. Um, now, these are usually big, big names from politics, from the media, from the acting professions, um, models, um, it, it doesn't matter, it's just an A-list celebrity crowd that makes these individuals just walk around, usually the newcomer, with his mouth open, not being able to believe the company in which he is. And at this moment, don't forget, he still thinks he's been invita invited to a party where he can do some networking, make contacts to get his career on, on supercharge, on nitrous oxide. So, uh, on, yeah. uh, so, from that point, um, everything is um, friendly. Everyone's walking around, talking to each other. All the handshakes, without exception, uh, for those who are already in the know, are the Masonic handshake uh, with the thumb pressed in between the, the thumb and the index finger. Um, and everybody is just cool, nice, loving, friendly, hospitable, and that lasts for around about one hour. Party starts at seven o'clock. So from seven till eight, for any stragglers, they're all gathered there into that room, uh, the reception area. The next room then they go into on the, uh, sorry, at the beginning, what well, I must admit, the host makes a declaration that go and enjoy the festivities. Um, we will start our descent at midnight. No one is allowed to leave before midnight, no matter what. And so that's the, the host having made the introduction at the, at the beginning. So I, I forgot to, to mention that. It starts with the speech. So there's all the intermingling then as on the chime of every hour, the groups move into the next room. So the first room is the reception area. The next room then is a, a blue room. 
And in the blue room, there are uh, like cabana type beds. There are, um, uh, whereas the first room was really just friendly, now it's becoming more intimate. There's a lot of sexual activity and a lot of, um, should we say, lewd behavior, and it's all acceptable. It doesn't matter who's doing what with whom or how, that's what's going on there. Okay? When the hour has chimed, doesn't matter the state of dress that some of these people are in, they then move on to the, the next room, uh, which is a, a, an orange room, uh, or the walls are, are orange or orange themed. That is a banquet, that is food, that is people eating caviar uh, as, if it's, uh, as if it's valueless. Uh, maybe taking one bite out of a big piece of meat and chucking it on the floor. So it's um, actual greed at its most defined level. As the bell chimes again, they move from that room, and then we're going now into um, the yellow room. The yellow room is all types of vice related to money and gambling, um, um, card playing, etc. And so now we've gone through from seven till eight, 8 till 9, 9 till 10, 10 till 11, and 11 till 12. We then end up in the, the fifth room, which is, in effect, um, at midnight. So there is, that's the red room. And in this red room, everybody is, uh, the room is generally empty. It's now just a, a red ambiance all around. And what happens then is, that the agent who's invited the, um, shall we say, the, the neophytes, the ones who've never been there before, um, are all told to come down to the front. And so they're all lined up with all the celebrity guests behind. And don't forget, everybody's still wearing masks. At that point, what happens is, one by one, they go up. There is the door now leading into the sixth room, okay? But to get into that room, something has to be done. An oath has to be taken. So the individuals are all lined up, and let's say there are 10 of them, uh, number one and 10, and they shuttle one by one up to the door. One side stands the agent or the scout, the other stands the host. The host has a series of books on the table and a set of um, diamond-shaped uh, silver or silver imitation silver discs. Uh, sorry, not discs, shapes. So the individual comes up to the, the, um, the host, and the host says to him, with the books on the table, which of these is yours? There is a Quran, there are Buddhist sutras, there is a Bible, there is the Torah, um, and so they're religious books. The individual points to one of them, then the host puts the diamond-shaped um, emblem, metal, onto the holy book and asks you to put your hand on it and swear then an oath. I'll just make sure I get this right because I write it down. Yeah, and what the oath is, is I am my own God. I bow to nobody but myself. That's the oath that you have to take. And why it's important is it's I am my own God. I bow to nobody but myself. So you can see what they're doing here. They're swearing an oath of the mythical or real allegiance that Lucifer, who raised his throne above that of God, pledged when he was kicked out of heaven. He basically has now said that I am the creator, not God, and he's put himself into a right pickle because there has to be a, 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 an individual unit that creates prior to something being created. And Lucifer for, for sure knows that he wasn't the one that started the process. But now we're in a bit of a conundrum and that's how it started. So. That individual has now done that, um, and then they are told they can go now into the final room, okay? This is the, the next room, okay? Um, they work the way down the list then to each one, and if you 
do not for any reason uh, um, sign the oath. The announcement is made by the host. The, let me just check what it is. Um, the, the, the fee has not, the, sorry, the price has not been paid. Remove the profane. The price has not been paid. Remove the profane. That then goes into a chant. He's then told to take his mask off, turn around, and the agent takes him by the arm and puts him out the door immediately. While the chant in the background is going, the price has not been paid, remove the profane. Okay? So that individual then is out, is made a, is signed an NDA, and usually nothing will happen if he keeps his mouth shut because he's not allowed to speak about who was at the party and what's happened, but he doesn't even know what's happened. However, there was the individual that I mentioned earlier, um, and what he did when he was kicked out, he didn't quite know. He wanted to try and warn his friend who he'd come to the meeting with. And so what he did is he went round the back of the house to try and peer in through into room six. Yeah? Now, looking through the window, what he saw was that the celebrities were all in a large outer ring, uh, in a, a ring here. These are the celebrities, the ones who had been in numerous times before. But the, the newbie group, the new group, they were in the center here. And what there were here were a series of cameras. TV grade or high quality video cameras filming the entire event of what is taking place now. The description of the events I leave to your imagination, but to be sure, they were as abhorrent and as probably cruel and as satanic as you could imagine. Because why they'd gone through these series of, of the rooms, um, from the reception, reception, and then the blue room, and then we were in the orange, and we were in the yellow, blue, orange, yellow, and then in the red, and then we've gone into the final room. What we've got here is a, a slow drip process. We had, bit by bit, uh, a slow process of indulging these individuals, the new ones, into these these, um, these, should we say, these lusts and greeds and these material pleasures that resulted in them being worn down, a, a, a drip, 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 better than a flood, as it's described. So by the time they get down here, by the time they've indulged in sexual activities, by the time they've indulged in food, uh, then in, in drinking whatever they, spirit or alcohol they wanted, um, gambling and then going in through this ritual they've been broken here actually by actually swearing the oath to Lucifer yeah I am my own God I bend or bow to nobody but myself and so these people here all of them without exception um, have all gone through the same channel some of them on the political market have gone through in a slightly more, should we say, uh, controlled way. But whether it is um, Macron, whether it's Ahern, whether it's Theresa May, whether it's Tony Blair, whether it's Trudeau, um, it doesn't, Kurtz of Austria, doesn't matter who these people are, they do not get any further until they've been through this meat grinder in effect. Because what they've got now is everything on film. And why this P, uh, P. Diddy at the moment, 
is probably being arrested and his mansion searched and his hard drives and everything being taken away is he had cameras in every room of his house, uh, in the bedrooms uh, and in private areas. And so maybe he ended up filming somebody who he shouldn't have done and that individual's found out. But usually this guy has only been allowed to be what he he is in, in Hollywood and in the media because they allow it and encourage it and want it. The more decadent, the more depraved, the more um, abhorrent the action is, the further you go because that's what they adore and that's what they, they love. So um, I think I've covered, um, I've covered everything mainly. In this room, as he said here, this is how it was set up. Um, and it was set up um, similar to a, a church, but without the pews, um, with obviously uh, artifacts uh, for ceremonial magic in there, um, probably the inverted pentagram. Um, yeah, pentagram. I won't draw it, but I'll probably get it wrong. So, um, inverted pentagrams, um, Statues of Baphomet, uh, statues of Satan, etc. So anyway, so that's really in, in, in essence what I'm trying to do for you here. I'm trying to center all of this and show that all of this stuff, Moderna, vaccination, Pfizer, the Center for Disease Control, the National Institute of Health, the FDA, the Department of Homeland Security, Donald Trump, Biden, the military, all of these people are connected in to these churches. This is the religion of the Antichrist. This is hell. This is where you are. This is prevalent now and so obvious to you that, you know, you should, be, you, know, you should be on the next UFO out of here if there's one available. Because you can see the degradation, the, the non-concern, the irrelevancy of everything on the planet from the trees to the fish through to other human beings, through to animals, the testing in laboratories that are conducted. It's just 100% this agenda because these people are in control and it's a very very ancient and despicable and rotten evil religion having said all of that you might be saying well and how could it have come about the idea behind it all in effect is that when the the son of god wanted to know who he really was he had to first know what he was not before he could know what he was. And he only knew that he was absolute love and compassion and beauty who had everything. In order, though, for him to know that experientially, he would have to come now into time and space in order to forget that which he, it was. And then by slowly, over time, learning and looking back on the excruciating beauty and of, of the Godhead, realize now what he actually is or was. So this is what's going on. These people here ultimately do go back to source. Hitler went to heaven, Rasputin went to heaven, Genghis Khan went to heaven, Fauci will go to heaven, Bill Gates will go to heaven. The question is when, but that having been said, this is an educational, spiritual um, uh, workshop I'm putting together for you here because we have to get to a point collectively where we can manifest our energies to see through these individuals who are all operating through a lie 
And that's the difference between this side of the aisle, which is God, and the Antichrist or Satan on this side, which is all born through illusion, perception, non-truth, coercion, bullying, lies, and deceit. That's the side that 98% of the population probably of the planet are currently on. And so something needs to be done. Mainly in times that we are living in now, from a spiritual perspective, for those of you who want to refer to this in a more, um, should we say, a, a more uh, not agreeable way, in a more proven way, go and have a look at the, uh, the, the, the TV series that was released in, 20, I think, August 2020. It's called Utopia. It's got John Cusack in it uh, as one of the lead, uh, lead actors called Mr. Christie. It explains the entire nature of the pandemic and how it was going to be put together. It was made between 2018 and 2019, so we can see that it was all there and it was shown as to how it was going to work and operate. So this is the dilemma. Um, these are the people who are controlling it. These are the people who are running it. And if you're not very careful and don't do something about it, they're going to come and roll ragged over you even more so than now. So if you think it can't get any worse, it hasn't even begun. At the moment, at least you can leave your house when you want. You can shop as you wish. Um, that can all change quite dramatically. Um, and as a, as a starter, what I would say to most people, or many people watching this, May the 7th could be May the 6th, but especially that week going forward, in the markets and for world events generally is going to be one to watch. Everybody that makes a prediction gets hung on his own or hoist on his own petard. But May the 7th is the official inauguration date for Vladimir Putin in Russia. And I think we could see some fireworks around about then. Um, so I hope that's been of interest. I hope you've learned something. Um, so I would say um, do that usual stuff, pass the video on, um, like and subscribe for what it's worth. It doesn't seem to make my, uh, my um, subscriber count move at all. So um, that's it for now. Thank you.